All right. So the next section is um, on the topic optimize secret management by um, if you Lua. Oh, please don't kill me after I pronounce your name. <laughs> but yes, if your Lua is going to be taking that, I don't want to mother the second name. He is fondly called Ife DevOps. So that's what I'm going to be calling him throughout the section. <laughs> This section, um, he's, he has over eight years experience and um, across um, various sectors, including banking, telecommunication, media, security, and consulting. Ife loves DevOps, just like the name Ife DevOps, just because of its broad um, coverage and dynamics. And uh, there's never a dull moment with Ife, of course. Car racing games and um, other musical instruments are things that Ife finds fun and exciting. So we're going to be hearing from Ife in a bit. Ife, can you hear us? It seems like we are muted. Oh, okay. Yeah, awesome. Okay. We can hear you now. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Um, so um, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm sure you had a nice break. Um, so, I mean, I, I may just choose to dive right in. Um, secrets. Um, it's a um, simple concept sometimes. could also be complex. Sorry, are you sharing any slides? We are only seeing a loop of... Uh, um, oh, okay. okay yeah. Let me... Nothing to share, but I could just... Um, leave it on my yeah just okay maybe i could leave it here oh, okay if you're not sharing anything now we can just take the screen off then when you want it on we can put it back okay sounds good okay okay yeah so um yeah just i mean the brief intro um secrets could be a simple concept could be a complex concept at times um but over time i i noticed that the approach to it um, affects how, you know, um, DevOps teams perform, you know, in terms of um, security breaches or even in terms of um, how holistic or how optimal secrets are managed. Um, so I thought to myself, okay, um, based on a few challenges and um, scenarios I found myself in, um, of course, based on several used cases, um, how should secrets be handled? Um, can they be handled you know, within the cluster? Should they be handled by a secret management tool? Um, how do we refresh and rotate secrets? Um, should they be part of Git? I mean, with the whole new you know, GitOps model, how should we approach um, secrets? Um, so based on the challenges I faced and um, how to efficiently manage secrets, I, I, I encountered some solutions. Um, you know, came up with a stack in how to, you know, make this seamless and easy to manage. Um, so um, th this is not going to be the conventional um, techie techie um, breakdown, but I'll just try to make it as simple as possible enough to relate to it. Um, okay, so I'm going to just demo something simple using a um, using um, some tools that make up this tech stack um, just to ensure that we can optimally manage secrets. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the whole, the takeaway from this is um, whatever stack we choose, whatever backend management tools we choose, um, it's something we can relate to it, something we can easily manage. And, you know, most importantly, something that um, meets the needs of, you know, the team and the organization in terms of, managing those you know sensitive um, sensitive artifacts in our environment okay so I'm going to share my screen now um, so I, I just have a short um, I mean I, I just did some brainstorming some typical challenges that I had faced and maybe what you know others might be facing in terms of um, um, the overall concept of, of secrets, you know, how to manage the entire secrets life cycle from um, when they are created to how they are rotated, 
to how they are even injected into um, um, the clusters, you know, the environment, to how they are deleted. Um, also, disaster recovery strategies for secrets. So, um, you know, we have several solutions that could back up um, the Kubernetes clusters, but um, how well are the secrets also backed up? How do we have, how do we ensure that if we lose our secrets, we can recover them? Things around GitOps, you know, how should we commit secrets to Git? Um, things around should the actual secrets, you know, sit in the cluster? Why not? I mean, it should be managed by an external secret management tool, maybe properly encrypted, and also guard against um, accidental deletion. Um, so things like that are, you know, some of the concerns that made me um, come up with this um, with this um, idea. So the stack that will be used here, um, I'll be using our secrets operator. Um, I mean, formerly called um, um, Kubernetes um, external secrets, but that has been deprecated. So it's now the external secrets operator with you know a whole lot of improvements. Um, so that would basically just be an abstraction layer. Um, so on a high level as well, there's a stack. It, it will be using called Reloader by um, um, Stackator. Um, I think it's a Swedish company also. So they also share this solution with the community. Um, and in terms of the cloud um, provider, we'll be using it. We'll be using um, EKS on Amazon, and our backend secret management tool will be Secrets Manager, AWS Secrets Manager. So. Some of these words, some of these terms or tools might be new, um, but I mean, some of us might you know, resonate with some of them, but nothing to um, get worried or get scared of. Um, I'll just deploy this in a very simple fashion, and then maybe we can run through um, questions, you know, observations, concerns. Um, yeah. So I already have my EKS cluster set up. I think one of the sessions in the morning went through, you know, um, setting up a mini cube cluster, or so any of that works as well. If you have, um, um, you know, connection set up to your secret management tool. But before now, I have my EKS cluster set up already. Um, as part of the prerequisite, so the first thing I would like to have will be to set up um, Reloader. Um, the charts are available in the GitHub repository. Um, so I mean. I could probably share this later. Um, so I'll just be installing, um, adding the Reloader's Helm chart to my local repo, Helm repo, just do some updates and install Reloader. Um, so I'll just grab this and you know, paste here. So it's grabbing the latest charts and, um, and we'll install. Um, now, downline, we'll still come to that, but maybe I should just mention this now. Um, setting up Reloader is pretty easy. It involves just adding an annotation. Um, no, have, most of the heavy lifting has been heavy lifting has been done in the setup. Um, so once you install the charts in your cluster, once you add them, um, you know Reloader in your cluster, you are good to go. Okay, so Reloader is added. Um, check to be sure. So um, I can just do kubectl get all, just to see that my reloader app is running. OK, so I see it's running. Deployment object looks good, and the pod is also running fine. Um, now the next tool to install here will be, or to deploy, will be external secrets operator. Um, but one of the prerequisites or um, the requirements will be to set up or define your AWS credentials. Why do we need um, your AWS credentials? Because you need external secrets operator to be able to communicate with your um, secret management tool. In this case, I'm using um, AWS Secrets Manager. So that means I need um, AWS credentials. You could use... Um, um, Azure Key Vault, or maybe GCP's Vault, or um, even HashiCorp Vault. Any of those other systems can work behind the scenes with ESO. Um, but in this case, I'm using um, um, AWS. And interestingly, I'm using IRSA. Um, 
this is a concept I won't dive deep in. It's just IAM rules for service accounts. So rather than me defining access keys and secret keys, I have a role defined. Um, to define the role, this is my policy here. I just need four um, permissions. I need to, be able to you know, describe a secret, list secrets and get secrets. Um, I can just show you that in the console. I have AWS single sign-on setup, just in case you're wondering what um, this is. So this gives me you know, a more easy and streamlined access to my environment. Okay, so let's see what we have set up for um, external secrets operator. Okay, so I have a role called external secrets and the permissions right here. Um, get resource, get secrets, describe secret and list secrets. So, and it can only access my um, secret manager resource in AWS. This is all you need. Just um, a user, but in this case I'm using a role with a permission that just needs access to AWS secrets manager. You can streamline your resource further, you know, to for that secret, but we'll get to this part in a bit. So I have my role set up. Um, I have my permission set up, and I think I'm good to go at this point to deploy external secrets operator. Straightforward as well. Um, you can grab the Helm chart for external secrets in um, the Helm charts um, repository for external secrets. Um, I have a repo added locally already. So it's optional for me to run this. I mean, you should probably say it already exists. Um, yep, already exists. So I will install external secrets. Now take note, I'm passing in um, my values file here. And this is simply the same, the default from the charts. And the only tweak here is I am adding my rule like I said, I'm using IAM role for service accounts. So this enables me to um, grant a service account in Kubernetes um, to grant it permission to assume or work with an IAM role in AWS. So with this, my service account can access AWS as long as I have this annotation here. And that's all. The rest of the values file is the same. Just use the default. Um, yeah, except you have some other um, interesting levels of configuration. Okay, so I will install this. I'm doing this in a namespace, by the way. Um, before now, I created an external secrets namespace. But this can be in your default namespace. Um, I mean, I recommend it to be in a separate namespace. It's good to always use um, a proper namespace strategy. So this will install the External Secrets Operator. Um, it's um, CRDs as well, I installed. Okay, hold on, I think um, this is for... Okay, continue should already exist. Okay. So I think that is um pretty sure I'd already installed this, but let me just be double sure. Um Okay, so I think Yes, it's installed. Great. So, um, yeah, external secrets installed successfully. Now, the concept of external secrets is after deploying um, 
the operator. You need to set up a secret store. What's the store? The store is simply a backend object that establishes connection to your secret management tool. So it could be HashiCorp Vault. Um, it could be Azure Key Vault, like I said. It could be, in our case, we're using AWS Secret Manager. And this is the manifest here. All of these charts and manifests are in the Helm chart repository, but I will just explain what um, the secret store does. So this is the manifest. Um, I'm giving it a name, AWS Secrets Manager, um, because that's the name for AWS. Um, I mean, it's just defined. It can be anything. You can call it anything. The region of um, my secret manager, manager will be EUS, so that's the London region. So that's the region I'll be using, which is this region here. Secret manager. Right here, I think I should be in the, okay. Okay, so let's go to the London region, EUS2. That's where we should be. Okay, great. Um, next up, the service is secret manager. So um, in external secrets, when you say secrets manager, that means you're referring to AWS secret manager. I think if you're working with Azure Key Vault, it has to be maybe something like um, Azure, maybe KV. Um, I can't recall, but you know, it's, it's there. So depending on the backend tool, that will determine the kind of name that should be here. But of course, this can be any name because this is just a friendly name for you to identify it as one of your Kubernetes objects. So I'll, I'll deploy the um, cluster secret store now. And while that will be deploying, I will explain um, one concept. Now in external secrets, we have what we call um, the cluster secret store or secret store. And you have what we call cluster external secrets or external secrets. If you notice, it's just the word cluster <clears throat> that is different in both. And why is that? Um, it means you can choose your object to be accessible throughout the Kubernetes cluster, or you can choose to tie it to a particular namespace. In this case, I will just like to have one secret store to serve all secrets in my cluster. So I'll go with the cluster secret store. So this is defined. This is created. OK. So um, let's see. Let's be sure. Let's I mean let's describe this object. Let's let's see what's happening now. We have our cluster store created, of course, with backend connectivity to um, AWS. How does a kubectl get cluster secret store? Let's see what we have. Okay, we have this created. Um, I think I'd like to describe this as well. I missed the word describe. Okay, so when I see an event like this, this is just a way to validate that your external secret operator successfully, you know, can successfully authenticate to AWS using the role or the credential you provided, maybe an access on a secret key stored somewhere or your role. In this case, I'm using IRSA, like I said. So this is good. This is a good sign um, that we can interact with AWS and we can also interact with the AWS Secrets Manager. Now we have um, Reloader deployed. We have External Secrets Operator deployed. We have the store created and deployed as well, which connects to AWS. I think it's, it's, it's now, let's get to the fun part where we start creating secrets. Um, now, like I explained the concepts of cluster external secrets or external secrets. I want to be able to create secrets from anywhere and map to any namespace. 
So that's why I'll, I'll opt for the plus the external secrets. Now, before I create my cluster external secrets, there will just be one prerequisite. Um, and I'll explain that now. This is what the cluster external secret looks like. And this is what the manifest looks like. Um, I'll just run through this um, so that you can understand what each section means. Of course, the name is the name of your cluster external secret object. Um, now, the external secret name is the name it will use to create um, or it will give you external secrets. What's the difference there? The external secret will be created in whichever namespace you define. So remember, you, you are managing a Kubernetes infrastructure. You're using you know, the namespace strategy to properly isolate workloads in your environment. I mean, maybe you have um, a namespace for dev or a namespace for staging, or you have a namespace for critical apps and less critical apps with several levels of isolation. At the same time, whatever, whichever secrets are consumed in the namespace has to be within that namespace. That's the whole idea of um, the virtual isolation, you know, with regards to namespaces. So here I'm saying, um, create an external secret and provision it to this namespace. In this case, I'm using the default namespace, but this can be any namespace. This can be maybe um, ABC app namespace. What does refresh time mean here? Refresh time simply says, external secrets operator, make sure that this external secrets always exists in this namespace. And who is in charge of that? It's the cluster external secrets. So every one minute, the cluster external secrets checks to make sure the external secret is in the default namespace. But it gets even more interesting. I mean, there's another layer just to ensure 100% or maybe near 100% protection or availability of your secrets. The next layer there is external secrets in turn also creates a secret within the same namespace. So you'll end up seeing three objects. You'll see an object of kind external secrets, external secrets you'll see an object of kind cluster external secrets, and you'll also see an object of kind secret. Of course, the one we're all familiar with is secret, which that is what our application will be consuming. We'll get to that part in a bit. So for the external secrets, it now creates a secret called test secret. Of course, this secret store ref is just saying, hey, remember I created a secret store Name the AWS Secrets Manager. That's the store you should connect with backend to fetch my secrets. So that's this is just like um, a reference call for synchronization. Hey, check uh, my AWS Secrets store, fetch all my secrets, or fetch my secrets named this. You see a section called um, data from or extract. Like I said, this might be new, this might be strange, but um, you know, I'll advise you check. Um, the docs as well. Um, I'll just try to do justice to you know explain a bit further, but um, the more you relate with it, you'll understand what each section you know is all about. So three kinds of objects will be created when I apply um, this manifest, um, which I'll do now. So let's create our cluster external secrets. Oh, before that, like I said, create secrets and secret manager. And why am I doing that? At the point when I'm telling it to fetch this secret, I need to make sure that I have a secret named this in AWS or in my secret management tool, any tool I'm using. Um, so I'm going to show you that. So I have the secrets defined and this is the name of the secret. So what I'm telling it here is extract the content of this from AWS and please create a secret for me in Kubernetes with those contents. And how do you connect? Please use this to connect the secret store. Now this year I'm achieving a couple, so many things here. So I'm going to apply this and we'll see what happens. Um, so let's just create this. I just have the syntax handy just um, to save time and effort. Okay, so I have 
the cluster acts are now secret created. So, um, let's see. We should have something called cluster external secrets, yes. Which in turn creates, um, in turn creates an external secret in the default namespace right here. Which in turn creates a normal, you know, the regular, the usual secret object, which is what you know the application will consume. So now let's see get secrets. And here we have to secrets. I mean, we are going to see something fun down the line. I could choose to delete the secrets. Um, I mean, this is one of the pros, the pros of um, external secrets, because of the synchronization. Um, I can choose to delete the secret and it will create it. kubectl delete um, secrets, test secrets. So it will refresh every, I think, one minute or even immediately. Let's see. Um, yeah, so you see, let me just clear this. Okay. Secret here, 50 seconds old, was deleted. And here it automatically recreated it. So let's say um, someone erroneously you know, deletes... Um, maybe just a typo and deleted the secrets. You can be rest assured that that secret will be recreated. If you're not using an external secret management tool, and if you're not using an external secret operator, um, there's, no way to, uh, there's no way to recall a secret. Unlike deployment objects or maybe stateful sets that have maybe um, things like revision history limits where you can you know, roll back objects or depending on if you do upgrades, there's no, there's no way to roll back or recover you know, objects like config maps or or even secrets once they're deleted, unless you have them saved somewhere, maybe locally or um, in a private you know, repository to yourself. Okay, so we have created our external secrets. We've also indirectly created our secrets. So I think we, we are ready to test this. Let's let's deploy um, a test application. Um, I just have a busy box here, um, which I'll run, which I'll, I'll deploy. And I made two additions to the busy box. The first one is the annotation for reloader. And this will simply ensure if I update my secrets, I don't have to manually do a rolling restart. It automatically redeploys, um, restarts all the pods. Now that will come in handy when you have lots of. It may not mean a lot if you just have one deployment object or two pods. But when you start dealing with hundreds of deployment objects or stateful sets, and you know you start managing large, huge, um, um, a huge number of microservices, and that's when this will come in very, very handy. So I have this annotation here that says, hey, just look out for all my mapped secrets and config maps. If you notice any of them is updated, automatically restart my pods. That's the first addition I have here. The final addition I have is, of course, I'm bringing in my secret. So I'm just saying, hey, um, fetch um, some environment variables from this secret. Remember, this secret is the third secret that was created from this, which is right here. So this is the third object that was created by me applying the cluster external secrets. So let's let's deploy our test app. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't have a ready syntax for this, so I'll just um, run this. Yeah, let's apply. Okay, let me just clear this to have a clear screen. Um, I'll get all now. Let's just see what's happening. Okay, I have my pods running. Um, let's, okay, I think, um, l let me exec into one of them just to. Um, Let's see what's going on. Um, 
we just want to validate our environment variables. Okay, so I'll say um, print env. Okay, I think let me just um, sort this properly. Let's say, um, okay, I just want to see what I need. Okay, so this is our environment variables in the pod. Let's see. And they match what we created here. So what's the entire flow of this? Um, I'll just run through it. Um, external secrets operator um, connects to AWS through the cluster secret store. That's the first part. The second part is the cluster external secrets creates an external secret in your defined namespace. And cluster external secrets always makes sure that <clears throat> the external secret exists. In turn, the external secrets created the secret object, which you know I assigned to the pod or to the deployment. And it always makes sure that that secret object always exists. So if I delete the secret object, external secret automatically recreates it. If I delete external secrets, cluster external secrets automatically recreates the external secrets. So you see there are you know, more than one level of protection here to prevent um, accidental deletion. So let's say, um, let's see what happens now. I think this is the final interesting part. Um, I'm going to modify um, a secret. Here. Let's say um, I add maybe one of the locations here. So let me um, update the secret. Let me add a, let me add a, let me add something here. Let me say um, KCD. Um, let me say city. So um, let me just add um, let me just add the main capital here in, in Lagos. So I'll just say um, let me say Kedja. Kedja and I will save. Oh, okay. So this is saved. So let's monitor what's happening here. Um, if I if I do a get all, we might observe something. Um, let's see if that will happen. I expect um, Reloader to go into action here. Okay, so I think the refresh time is one minute. So um, just wait for a few more seconds and you should expect... Um, any deployments to kick in. Okay. <laughs> Reloader is active. Um, so we see here that the last set of pods um, are terminating while new pods are running. Remember, this happens in a rolling fashion. So there is no downtime. Uptime is guaranteed. Um, and of course, this also respects your um, your update strategy. So if you're using maybe um, um, a fresh redeployment of everything or a rolling restart or a rolling upgrade, that's what will happen. Reloader respects your update strategy. But by default, um, the default Kubernetes update strategy, which most almost I mean, everyone uses is the rolling upgrade. So it ensures that um, it iteratively shuts down each pod one at a time and then spins up each new pod. So it takes down pod one, brings up a new pod, takes down pod two, and brings up a new pod. Just to be sure that all our new pods are running. And To be double sure, I will um, just exec, you know, connecting some of the new pods and um, be certain that we have um, we have our new um, environment variable. Okay, so I'm going to print the environment variables, env. Um, 
and search for KCD. And I have KCD City Ikeja. Voila. So this, um, I mean, it, it looks like a lot of heavy lifting has been done here. And this achieves the goal which you want to achieve. Now, I mean, the, the pros of this stack, I just did some brainstorming and I said, um, okay, um, secrets can now be part of the GitOps model. I mean, you don't, you don't want to be committing actual secret manifest <clears throat> into Git, but with external secrets operator and with this entire stack, as a matter of fact, you can have your external secrets manifest in Git. In fact, um, depending on your GitOps strategy, in some cases, if you're using tools like Argo CD or um, Jenkins MGX3, you can have some levels of integration where um, when you make a change, um, Argo CD automatically does, um, you know, recognizes that new artifact. Um, at the same time, if you're using GX3, you can, you know, build a model that says um, automatically connect to AWS and create secrets. So th that's the next layer, maybe um, the next, um, I mean, maybe the next um, KCD, who knows, maybe um, that will be featured. But that's something also, you know, that's possible. You can automatically create secrets from AWS without um, manually defining your secrets. So just have something in, um, just properly define your GitOps model and that is very much possible. Automatic secrets rotation, I mean, the option is here. Um, you can um, configure Imagine this a uh, database credentials or you know any other form of credential. You can configure automatic rotation. Um, DR strategy. Well, I think just to save cost since it's just a test, but you can also set up um, replication. Um, if I attempt to create a new secret, so I think it's it's even here. Um, you can choose to relocate secrets to other regions, so you're not um, scared of the fact that a region may go down or your cluster might be on a you know unreachable or you know your cluster crashes and all of that that automatically handles your disaster recovery strategy also secret synchronization like we saw um you delete a secret it gets you delete a secret object it automatically gets recreated um you um you update a secret it automatically gets you know um, the pods gets redeployed in a rolling fashion i mean a couple of that and the cons of the stack Nothing is perfect. There's always room for improvement. So to me, um, so far so good. I feel it's just um, one more layer of operational management, which happens just once, which is at the point of setup. Uh, because the rest of um, the operations are basically you know, um, automated. So if I'm to deploy a new application, I just have to create my secret manifest, create my backend secrets and AWS and redeploy. Whenever I update my secrets, Reloader automatically reloads. So I feel with this, um, I think optimizing secrets, you know, should be more user friendly. Shouldn't be that scared topic um, handled by only the maybe experts or the gurus in in, um, in the Kubernetes community. I think everyone can relate with it. Um, everyone can just deploy a simple stack depending on maybe your cloud provider or your segment um, um, tool of choice. And you can achieve um, an optimal um, secret management lifecycle, you know, without um, being an expert. Um, so I think that's the end of my demo. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, yes. Thank you, guys. So if you have any questions. Um, Awesome, that was a great session. I've always looked forward to uh, secrets and uh, different other options around uh, secrets management. I think one of the most popular ones is Vault, but I've never seen a demo of uh, that of AWS. Um, I don't, we don't have any questions yet from the audience. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions, uh, if we can share for, if, if you're lower to answer. Uh, 
Okay, someone is asking, so there is a Kubernetes service that does this? Kubernetes service. Um, I guess you're referring to the operator, external secrets operator. Before now, it was Kubernetes external secrets, but um, that has been deprecated and improved. So we now have the external secrets operator. So for now, we can say that is the Kubernetes um, controller or service that does um, that. That is the backbone of this entire stack, basically. Sorry, I think I think you're on mute. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> I muted from the microphone, but I was seeing the screen as okay. as if everything was fine. <laughs> okay. So awesome. Thank you very much for the awesome presentation. I mean, look forward to having you uh, on our subsequent uh, event. It was a very great presentation. Thanks. The pleasure. Thank you. Okay.